In this Excel tutorial, we'll learn how to apply an independent samples t-test in order to evaluate a post-test only with control group training evaluation design. So you'll note here that we have three columns here that correspond to three fields or variables of interest. Well, the first column isn't necessarily a variable per se, rather it's a unique identifier variable that we're gonna skip for the purposes of this tutorial. The two columns that we're most interested in here contain the variables related to condition and safety performance. And so as a general backstory here in terms of providing some additional context, let's assume and imagine that there's an organization and it's designed a new safety program and it wants to know whether or not that safety program is effective. So it needs to evaluate that safety program. Well, it chooses to evaluate that safety program based on a safety performance assessment. And the idea here is that it, they take a group of 10 employees who are participate in the new training program, which apply to this condition or this level of the condition that's called training. And then another 10 employees, they get assigned to complete the control condition, which let's just assume that in this context, that means that they go about their day-to-day -day work operations and that they don't actually engage in any type of training around safety performance. And then after the people who participated in the actual new training, safety training, are complete, everybody goes and takes the safety performance regardless of whether they receive the new training related to safety or they were in the control group or what is sometimes called the comparison group, okay? And so here, safety performance are their scores on that post-test safety assessment, okay? And so this is their safety performance. Let's assume that 100 would be the maximum score, zero would be the lowest on this assessment, and that here you can see we have a variety of scores um, that fall somewhere in between those limits. Okay, so again, this is a post-test only with control group design. Let's say that it's not a true experimental design in that people were not randomly assigned, these employees right here were not randomly assigned to these conditions here, where the conditions again are training versus control conditions. Sometimes you might hear this referred to as just generically the treatment versus control or treatment versus comparison group conditions. All right, so what we're going to do is apply an independent samples t-test. And before we get there though, let's calculate some descriptive statistics like the mean and the standard deviation for the employees who are in each condition and their scores on safety performance. So let's quickly create a little table here. I'll create the first column, let's call it condition. And then next column, mean. And then the, this third column here will be SD for standard deviation. And so under condition, let's put the two condition levels, which are you either participated in the training, which is our treatment, or the control, which is our comparison group. And I am going to bold these just so they stand out a little bit more as labels here and headings. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate, we're gonna complete this cross tabulation here, this table, and we're gonna calculate what is the mean safety performance score for those who participated in the training condition. And so to do so, we'll hit the equal sign here, and then we'll use the average function from Excel. It's just A-V-E-R-A-G-E, -E, parenthesis. And what we're going to do is just grab the array or vector of values that correspond to those employees who participated in the training condition. Okay, so we're just grabbing those safety performance scores because remember each row here represents a unique employee with their unique identifier here. And so we're just grabbing those 10 employees scores who participated in the training condition. Okay, and so that happens to be cells C2 through C11 here. And with Excel, if you put a, use a colon here, this indicates that you are grabbing a range or an array of cells. All right, so now we're ready to hit enter, and we see that the mean is 78 here. Okay, let's do the same thing and compute the, the um, average or mean safety performance for those people in the control condition. Use the same average function here, come down here, and grab just those scores of those 10 people who were assigned to the the control condition, meaning they did not receive any safety training, and here are their scores, and that happens to correspond to 
the array that ranges from C12 to C21 in this data set here. Close out the parenthesis and hit enter. And we can see that the average is 54. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the standard deviations for each one of these subsamples here. And to do so, let's first start, we'll use the um, standard deviation specific formula for samples. And we will do that first for the training people. So those people, what is the standard deviation of their scores on safety performance? And specifically for those people, again, in the training condition. So we'll do equal sign STD ev dot s and that's all caps there if you tab over in excel it'll capitalize that for you and what we're going to do is do the exact same thing we did before which is just grab those 10 people who participated in the training condition and we're just grabbing their safety performance scores which again in this instance corresponds to cells that range from c2 to c11 close out the parenthesis, hit enter there, and we see the standard deviation is 4.92, let's say if we did some rounding. All right, next we're going to do the same thing, except we're gonna calculate the standard deviation using that same Excel function, stdev.s, and we are gonna grab the array of cells here, the range of cells that ranges from C12 to C21, and those correspond to those people who participated in the control condition and their safety performance scores. Close out the parenthesis. And here we see the standard deviations. All right, so I like to do a little bit of formatting here. We can go up to number and we can make sure that we have about the same number of decimal places here. So let's, uh, you can kind of toggle around. Let's, I like to report things to about two to three decimal places. Um, let's actually just go ahead and go to three here. And so here you can see we have two different means here, okay? Here's the mean safety performance scores um, for those people who participated in the training condition. And here's the mean safety performance score for those people who participated in the control condition. And so we can see descriptively that there does appear to be a difference between these means. The question then becomes, can we treat these differences as statistically significant or this difference here as a statistically significant difference? Okay, and so that's where the independent samples t-test comes into play. And why are we calculating the standard deviation here? Well, this gives us an idea of dispersion or spread of scores around the mean here. And here we can see that the standard deviations are, let's say, roughly equivalent. And so we can use just a conventional independent samples t-test where we assume equal variances in each one of these groups, um, equal variances around, in terms of the scores. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to um, run our independent samples t-test. And really we're just skipping right to getting the p-value associated with an independent samples t-test. And so to do that, we are going to use the equal sign because we're gonna grab an Excel function and we are going to do t.test. Okay, so t.test, fairly intuitive function name there start the first parenthesis. And so we are going to grab the first array, array one, as you can see here noted, is going to be, let's say the training group here. So it's gonna be those cells that range from C2 to C11, which corresponds to those safety performance scores for those people in that training condition, comma, to separate that from our next argument, which is the second array. And that second array, we're just gonna grab those cells that correspond to safety performance scores for those people at the control condition. So C12 to C21 in this case, comma. Now we're on to our third argument in the t.test function in Excel. And this is gonna be one you'll just have to remember. And it's asking, you can see down here, tails, okay? And so, and right here you can see, do you want a one-tailed or two-tailed distribution? Okay, we want a two-tailed distribution that's fairly conventional here, um, it's, which means it's not a directional test. And so what that means is we'll put a two right here for the comma, or after the comma for this third argument. And then we enter a second argument or final argument here. And for that final argument, it's asking us, you can see it prompts here, what type of t-test do we want to apply here, okay? And we don't want to pair t-test because these are independent groups of people, okay? So what that means is that no employee participated in both the training control group. These are discrete or separate groups of people, 
Half the people were in the training condition, the other half were in the control. So therefore that rules out doing a paired samples t-test, which is sometimes called a dependent samples t-test. Okay. As are the independent samples t-test name implies, we're talking about independent samples or a between subjects design you might, you might hear it called. Okay, now earlier I mentioned that the standard deviations were about comparable. And remember, the standard deviation is just the square root of the, uh, the variance. And so for that reason, you can interpret the standard deviation as an indicator of variation. And here, because these, these standard deviations are roughly similar to each other, Let's go ahead and put two here as the final fourth argument in the t.test function, because that's going to be a two sample equal variance or what's called a homoscedastistic test, independent samples t-test, okay? If you were to have a situation where you had very different standard deviations or variances, in other words, you would say that there's unequal variances, then you would choose this third option here for an independent samples t-test, okay? So we're gonna put two as our final argument do the close out parenthesis there. Okay, and so just to quickly review, name of the function t.test, okay, for the independent for the t-test in general. And then we have the first array is our first argument, and that's the safety performance scores for those people who participated in the training condition. And then the second argument is the safety performance scores for those people who participated in the control group. The third argument is whether we want a one or two-tailed test. We want a two-tailed test. Um, in terms of a two-tailed distribution for our p-value. And then finally, the fourth argument here, we also put the numeral two because that specifies we want an independent samples t-test where we assume equal variances between the two conditions or the two independent samples or groups. All right, now we're ready to hit enter. All right, so this is our p-value here. And I'm gonna put that here so we don't forget. This is our p-value you see to the left of my label here. And what you'll note is that this is defaulted straight into what's called scientific notation. You might remember this from middle school or high school science courses. And you read this by, um, this refers to how many places after the decimal, um, or rather how many places to the left, because this is negative. And then in this case, it's nine places to the left, this decimal place would move here. And what this is telling us here is this is a very small value. Um, it's a very small decimal, okay? And so there's different ways you can change this around. So if you actually do a copy, and if you paste this into another cell here, oops, copy that one more time, and then let's say we just paste into a cell and you just do the values here, okay? If you play around with this, you can actually come up here and you can change the formatting of this. If you want to convert it to just a number, um, so it's not in scientific notation anymore, you can do that, okay? And then you can adjust the decimal place and so forth. And here you can see, it looks like it's the p-value is exactly zero. It's not, because remember, we just know that it has a lot of decimal places. So there's a lot of zeros after the decimal place before we get to 30327. And so how do I know that? Well, let's increase these decimal places and we can see 30327 here. And if we count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decimal places there. So that's where that negative value comes in. Okay, so this is our p-value. You can report it either way. Um, just remember, that sometimes it's easier with scientific notation when we're dealing with these very small values. It reminds us that the p-value is never gonna be equal exactly to zero, okay? And so we would just say, in this case, typically if we're reporting this, we would just say p is less than 0.05, okay? And so why did I say 0 0.05? Well, 0 0.05, this is a conventional alpha value, okay? where alpha is the threshold below which, if the p-value is below 0 0.05, we would say it's statistically significant. And what does that mean in the context of an independent samples t-test? Well, it means that these two means here are statistically significantly different from one another, okay? There's a statistically significant difference, okay? And so we can treat these two means as being different. And so what that means is that here, 
because the mean for the training condition is 77.52 and the mean for the control condition is 54.4, this means that we can say that the training condition, those who participated in the training condition had safety performance scores that were significantly higher, significantly better than those people who participated in the control condition. So in the context of training evaluation, this would lend evidence to the idea that our training seems to be effective, this new safety training, at least with respect to the outcome of safety performance. Okay. Now, what would have happened if that p-value was equal to or greater than 0 0.05? If that were the case, we would conclude that these two means would not have been statistically significantly different from each other. Even though we might descriptively see differences, we would instead conclude that, well, we can't treat these two means as being different from one another, okay? And so that's important to remember too. And I'll make a little note here. Um, if the p-value is equal to or greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, then we conclude that there is not evidence of statistical significance. Okay. Now, when you look at this and you think, okay, so where does this come from? Um, this idea of statistical significance, what's really being tested here behind the scenes, if you're interested, is the null hypothesis, okay? Because we're, what we're doing here is what's called traditional null hypothesis significance testing. So what's the null hypothesis that we're actually testing when we're doing an independent samples t-test here? Well, typically the null hypothesis is going to be that there is no difference between the two means. Or in other words, the two means are equal, okay? And what we're doing when we have a p-value that is less than 0 0.05, which is our conventional cutoff, which again indicates statistical significance, what's happening is that we're saying we are rejecting this null hypothesis, okay? Because the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we're rejecting the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the two means or that the two means are equal. And therefore, we are concluding in a practical sense that there is a significant difference between these two means, okay? If we were to have had a p-value that was equal to or greater than 0 0.05, then we would have concluded that there is um, that we then we would have failed to reject this null hypothesis, which is another way of essentially saying that we're accepting the null hypothesis that there's no evidence here, statistically speaking, that there is a difference between these two means, and we can conclude that the means would have been equal. Okay, but what we found here, because this p-value here is less than 0 0.05, this is statistically significant, okay? All right, so this wraps up this tutorial on how to apply an independent samples t-test using Excel and doing so for the purposes of evaluating a training program. And in this case, evaluating a training evaluation design that is called a post-test only with control group design. Thank you very much.